this is Paul from Guru Parents and today I'm going to show you one of my favourite topics, long division. This is the second in our series of division tutorials. The first was on short division and it's designed to help you, the parent, help your child with their division homework and we're assuming that maybe you might have forgotten a bit about the principles that you learned way back in school. So, this is the first uh, question that I'm going to do. If you did see the short division uh, video, you'll notice that it's exactly the same question that I began with in that video. And the point here is that you can use short division or you can use long division for any given question. Usually, if this is a one digit number here, you tend to use the short division method. And if this is a two or more digit number here, you use long division. But I'm aware that in some places they go straight to long division and I thought it might be nice for you to be able to compare the two and realise that the long division method is exactly the same really as the short division method. You just write more of the steps on paper to make it a little bit easier for you to do. So, I'll go through this one and then discuss the principles that are involved. The first thing you do, you mentally ignore those numbers there and say, how many times does 4 fit into 8? And the answer is 2. So you write 2 up there. Now the next thing with long division is you always now proceed to a multiplication step. You then say, what is this number here multiplied by this? And 2 times 4 is 8, and you write it there. Next comes subtraction. I say, what is 8 minus 8, that is a 0. Next comes a comparison, which um, for this simple question we really don't need to worry about. I'll, I'll explain that more when I move on to a more difficult question. And then the final step is a bringing down step. And here we're going to bring this 9 down here to here. And then the process is repeated starting now by saying how many times does 4 go into this number here, which is 9, and the answer is that 4 goes into 9 twice, because 2 4s are 8, and I write 2 up here, and continue with the process. Again, a multiplication step, 2 times 4 equals 8, this time I write it here, and now we proceed to the subtraction step, what is 9 minus 8? equals 1. Again, the comparison step, we won't worry about it at this point at the moment. Go straight to the bring down, bring down the 6, and now we move to the last phase, which is how many times does 4 go into 16? The answer is 4. Straight to multiplication, what's 4 times 4? It's 16. Now to subtraction, 16 minus 16 is 0. We've used all of these numbers up here, we've got a 0 down here, we are finished. 896 divided by 4 equals 224. So, I'll now move on to a more typical long division question. What is 1485 divided by 22. So, the process that you go through, as I went through in that previous question, is you divide, you multiply, you subtract, compare, and then bring down. Now, there are lots of different ways that students can be taught to memorize this process. Um, one that I particularly like is that you take the first letter of each one and form a little mnemonic, and the mnemonic is does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? And then you bring down. So if you go through that process each time, does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers and bring down? It's a nice, easy way to remember it. So that's what we'll do here. So first of all, how many times does 22 go into 1? Well, it's obviously too big. And it's also too big even for 14. So we've got to go straight to how many times does 22 go into 148. This part here, I think, is the, the reason that so many people have bad memories about long division, and yet it actually should be the most enjoyable part of the process. The reason that people find it difficult 
is that there's no clear-cut way of doing it. You have to use a bit of uh, guesswork, uh, a bit of detective work, and I think that's where the fun can come in. The best part is that if you do get it wrong, and you choose the wrong number here, it's okay. The method will allow you to correct that, and you'll get the answer. It'll just take a little bit longer. So if you're great with numbers in your head, you'll find this part easy. If you're really bad with numbers in your head, you might find this part uh, a bit more difficult, but take your time and you'll get there. So, how many times does 22 go into 148? One of the simple things that you can do to kind of uh, get you off on the right foot is to mentally cover up the last digit in each number. So, we cover up the 2 and cover up the 8, and I'm left with how many times does 2 go into 14? And the answer to that is obviously 7. So, we know that 7 is going to be pretty close to the right number. But if I look at it and I say, well, what is 7 times 20? I know 7 twos are 14, therefore 7 times 20 is 140. I'm already getting pretty close to 148, and I haven't even added in my 7 times 2. So the process I take at this point is say, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a 6. Now, if you weren't sure, um, you could work on the side and do a little bit of multiplication and, and check to see if you're right. But this time I'm confident, so I'm going to put the 6 in place. So, we've done the division, now we move to the multiplication. 6 times 22. And you do it simply as you would normally do multiplication. 6 times 2 is 12. Put down the 2 here. Carry the 1. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 1 is 13. 132. Now we move to the subtraction step. 148 minus 132. So a 6 there and a 1 there. Now here is where the compare step becomes important. You want to make sure that this number here is not bigger than this number. Because if this number here was bigger than this number, it would mean that we haven't chosen a big enough number here and we've got to go back and work through this process again. Of course, if this number here, as a car goes by, nice and loud, if this number here is higher than this number here, in other words, if we were going to get a negative result here, then we'd have done the opposite. We'd have chosen too big a number here. And then you just go back and refine your guess. You might have to cross it all out and start it again, and that's fine. And that's what I mean by the method will help you um, to make sure that you don't make a mistake. So, in this case, the comparison process works fine because 16 is smaller than 22, and I can now go straight to the bring down. So, I bring down my 5. More fun is in store because we now have to ask how many times does 22 go into 165? Pretty similar to the last one. I could cover up each number at the end, and I'm now left with how many times does 2 go into 16? as a kind of a guide, and the answer to that is 8. So if I say, well, I know that 8 twos are 16, therefore I know that 8 twenties are 160, just as before, I kind of get the realisation that 8 is going to be too big, so I'll drop down one and try with 7. So, up goes my 7, and now we repeat the process all over again. Firstly, multiply. 7 times 22. 7 times 2 is 14, put down the 4, carry the 1, 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15, there we go, that's the multiplication section done. Straight along to subtraction, 165 minus 154, 5 minus 4 is 1, 6 minus 5 is 1, 11. Now we compare, and beautiful. The 11 compares very favourably with the 22 in that it is lower than it. So we know that we've done the right thing. And that's it. We're, we're finished really because we've used up all of these numbers here. We've pulled down the 5. So 
we have done it and we're going to be left with a remainder. 1,485 divided by 22 equals 67 with a remainder of 11. So you can, you can leave it like that or you can also convert the remainder to a fraction or a decimal. So let's do it to a fraction first. We know that we are left with 67 and 11 over 22. And 11 over 22 happens to nicely be a half. So you could write a half as the answer, and the answer is 67 and a half. The other way you can do it is to convert it, is to convert the remainder to a decimal. The way you do that is that you put in a decimal point here and a decimal point here, and you add a zero here. You can add as many zeros as you want along here. We'll just add one, and then you simply continue with the process. The process now is we're up to the bring down phase. Bring down the zero here. There goes the zero, and so we're back to the top, and we divide. How many times does 22 go into 110? Well, using the rule of thumb before, covering up, covering up. How many times does 2 go into 11? Well, it's only going to go in 5 times. If I know that 5 twos are 10, I know that 5 twenties are 100. So I can sort of say, this time I'm going to be happy with the 5. It looks like it's going to end up pretty neatly. So, put 5 here, and then multiply. 5 times 22. 5 times 2 is 10. Put down the 0, carry the 1. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. And then when we subtract, we get a 0, which means there's nothing left over. It has been done perfectly, and funnily enough, it's 67.5, which is exactly the same as 67 and a half. So there you go. Now, in various schools around the world, various different methods are used, um, various different ways of writing and talking about things. So obviously you'll need to adapt a little bit to the way um, that your child learns it at school, um, but hopefully that gives you a, a good reminder of the basics um, of the process. Um, feel free to drop a line in the comments and ask any questions if you feel like you need any help. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.